Hello there, the Gagger Man here. You may have seen me and Cherry T larking about in Margate in a previous video, but the main reason we visited this seaside town was to attend their very own Play Expo, which is much closer and easier to get to for us than the Play Expo in Manchester, though we would also like to check that one out sometime in the future too. The event took place in the Winter Gardens Theatre, just a 15 minute walk away from our hotel. Right, we're on our way to Winter Gardens, just walking through. <laughs> Alright, uh, we're just walking past the uh, Margate Beach and Stacey is uh, appropriately dressed in a big old Mario dress and backpack and I've got my Dreamcast bag which I'm hoping to fill with games but we'll see, depends how much everything is. Well here we are in the Play Expo and there's all sorts of tables and bits and bobs so I think this is one of maybe multiple rooms, I'm not entirely sure yet but we'll have a mooch around and we'll see what's We'll see what's here. <laughs> As we first entered the event, we encountered the market room. This was maybe a bit smaller than we expected, with a few of the stores we recognised as regulars at the London gaming market, such as Retrospective 22 and Console Passion. But here, with a whole weekend to spend rather than a mere few hours, it was a more casual, less cram packed experience. We now got to take my time and chat with the staff. Some Disney sausages. Disney sausages. Oof. I'm glad I own some of those. <laughs> Plushies. Plushies. Mega Drive. Pump machines. I had the Shining Force free here, but I cannot afford. It was like 90 quid. <laughs> no surprise. Two crew dudes. Oh man. Two crew dudes. Oh, some nice systems. 32X. Ah, Twin Famicom, or Famicom Twin. One of those miniature NESs at the top loaders. Fetrex games! Fetrex games! Now I just need a Fetrex to play them on. Right there, um, I've picked up a few games from Console Passion just down there. Uh, picked up four games from them. Uh, I've got two Saturn games. I've got Die Hard Trilogy for the Sega Saturn. It's the Japanese version, it's got the spine card. Uh, this is a game that we played on uh, Lucky Hit Plays recently, and you saw how angry Murray Curry got on it, but now I own it as well on the Saturn. Uh, the other Saturn game I've got is this game called Hammer. It's, I think it's quite an early one. It came out near the launch of the Saturn and it says Hammer Adventurous Ball in Giddy Labyrinth. And it's like a game where you tilt a big puzzle around and just move the ball around. So I've, you know, I've heard of it. I've never seen it in magazines like when I was little and thinking, oh, that's interesting, vaguely. <laughs> I've got a Mega Drive game. I've got Desert Demolition with uh, Roadrunner and Wily Coyote. It's uh, kind of like two games in one, really. You can play as Roadrunner and it's very Sonic-like and you can just run around in loops and run away from Wily Coyote. Or you can play as Wily Coyote and you have to set up traps for Roadrunner. But yeah, I had this game as a kid, uh, really good game, lovely graphics, uh, one of Sega's best Looney Tune games I'd say. Uh, yeah, I've got that one as well, it's immaculate condition inside there. And the last game I got, this was the main one I wanted out of what they had here. Card Fighters Clash SNK vs Capcom for the Neo Geo Pocket. This is the Capcom characters edition, they did a Capcom one and an SNK one. It actually kind of, from what I've seen, it looks a little bit Pokemon like where you walk around and you look sprite and you, you know, collect the cards and fight and all that kind of stuff. And I just love the box art, it's got characters from Power Stone and Rival Schools and Resident Evil and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I just remember this having really nice, like, card sprite work and I've never played it, but. Uh, it's been a very long time since I bought a Neo Geo Pocket game. I've got a bit of a collection going on, but yeah, this is one of the ones I've been after for a while. So, I got all of those games. They came to £59 for the four. They let me have the lot for 50 so I'm really happy with that. So that's what I bought on the first day. I don't know if I'm going to be buying anything else, but if I don't, then... Hard Fighters Clash! There was also a stage in here for a fence such as a cosplay showcase which Stacy jumped in on as Barbara from Rayman Legends. And check out that Margin Boo with his Super Saiyan son. Can we have a huge round of applause for the cosplayers of Four Play Margate? <laughs> the stage also held host to a presentation by Alan Meads about his project called Arcade Tales, a comic strip about people's arcade memories. A free comic was given away at the event called Goddess of Retribution which goes into Game Center CX levels of detail about one man's childhood spent regularly playing Nemesis in his local arcade. 
there is also some great insight into Margate's seaside arcade history. Alan is looking for others to share their arcade tales, so if you have one you want to share with him, let him know at his website, where you can also read the comics released so far. But this was just one small section of the event, as downstairs was the main hall. We found a much, wow, okay, much bigger room full of consoles, oh my god. The floor of this huge theatre room that would normally host seats for an audience was replaced with what must have been over a hundred game consoles and machines in all, on rows upon rows of tables. In fact there were so many, here's a musical montage of them. And the partridge in a pear <coughs> what, what was I doing again? Oh yeah. Yeah! They've got Chaotix. I was hoping they'd have that. There it is. Can I just... Can I just... Uh, the, <laughs> can I just have that? There were some great, pretty rare games to play here such as Chaotix for the 32X, Musha for the Mega Drive, and Umihara Kawase for the Super Famicom. In a few cases they were using repro carts, but I don't really blame them to be honest. This is a repro, I can tell because there's no SRAM. <laughs> I was especially impressed with just how many Sega Saturns were here, including a few Japanese ones with super expensive rare games on them like the highly regarded shmup Battle Gorega. Right, I am getting on this motherfucker right here. This I've wanted to play for years. Gorega! The most expensive smart I can't afford! Right, let's play Thunderful Skull Pack 2, which has two games on it. No, no. Right, we have. Um, uh, oh, sorry, I thought this was the Thunderfalls pack, but apparently it's the Fudderfalls pack. We can play Fudderfalls Ack and Fudderfalls 4. What's cooler than Fudderfalls 4? Thunder Force 4 on a Saturn. Yeah. Oh. Of the droves of consoles on display here, there was a couple in particular I really wanted to check out for the first time, such as the NEC PCFX, the successor to the PC Engine that never left Japan and wasn't very popular. The game on display here, which I had to look up after the show is going by the name of Chip Chan Kick, has anime cutscenes up the wazoo and lots of voice acting. It even has a voice actress omake thing that I stumbled upon by pure accident in the options. I've, what? What have I done? Uh, voice actress talk? What's going on? Uh, what have I done? Abort, abort! Oh, I can be Chip or Chat. <laughs> chip or Chat? Okay. Should I be Chat? Because I am a Chat. The game itself was actually a really pleasant surprise. It's a single screen platformer, much like Bubble Bobble. Enemies consist of walking vending machines, telephone poles and mailboxes, and in true Taito-like fashion they turn into candy and food when defeated. It was great fun and I played it quite extensively, but most of that time was spent trying, and failing, to beat the first boss, which features a giant rollerblading robot peacock that shoots out difficult patterns of deadly feathers. After about 10 attempts I rage quit. Chop Chan Kick is a very sought after expensive game, so I'm really glad I got to try it out. It's a fun game, but I'd maybe skip the cutscenes if I were you, just in case. They're a bit on the knicker flashy side. This might be the ugliest console I've ever seen, but it's actually a really good console because it has this. <laughs> a really good version of Daimakamura or Ghost of Goblins. Okay, I really like the twin Famicom's controllers. Look, one, big fat one. Big fat too, it's almost like a 70s font on there, it's beautiful. The actual console's really nice and all. So what game is in here? Let's have a quick look, I've turned it off. Oh, I think that's Metroid. Wow, all right. Petrix! Petrix. 
the best bloody console ever made. Look at this thing. Look at that stick. Look at those vector graphics. It's still the best console ever. Star Trek the game. Let's have a quick look at that. Ready, Captain? While well, this crazy obnoxious music goes on. Vector graphics. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know if I can move. Am I moving? Uh, <laughs> I'm getting shot by things and I'm going to crack my screen. Ah. I also finally got to try out a Virtual Boy for the first time. The game playable on it was Mario Tennis and I actually kind of liked it. I was quite surprised how sharp and clear the visuals were inside that thing and the depth of the 3D was actually really impressive. It was a little tricky to gauge the depth of the tennis ball so I didn't play too well and I did eventually feel a bit of a headache coming on but honestly it wasn't the horrible experience I was expecting and the headache could have very well have been set off by the never ending loud dubstep remixes of game music playing in the hall all day long. I'd love to try out some different games on one of these one day and sort of kind of want one? It can go on my list of gimmicky unlikely purchases like the Fetrex anyway. The controller is very weird. 2D pads for some reason. I think this game is never going to end, so I'm just going to leave it. Virtual Boy. There's a PS2 with Raving Rabbits on it, by the looks of it. How does this play on PS2? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay, because this was just waggling on the Wii. On the PS2, you have to destroy your hands on the analog sticks, apparently. Oh, that seems horrendous. <laughs> I'd rather waggle a Wii remote than uh, do what you're doing. <laughs> Quid out. <laughs> they have Rayman 3 on this one. Oh, you found him. Mooney Gnome. Right. <laughs> Mooney Gnome. <laughs> That's all we needed. Along with the massive consoles, there was also a corner of the hall dedicated to arcade and pinball machines. Many of your typical classics were here, along with a couple nice surprises I don't quite often see, like an original OutRun machine. Right, we've got our standard eye art run here. We can pick a song, but you won't be able to hear it, so it doesn't really matter. It's not the same about the music, it really isn't. You need the music blaring out. They need to turn off that music out, out the, on the other side and put this on instead. Look uh, at that Ferrari. And, a horse, and a horse, the Ferrari logo that flips back and forth. And yet the people don't, so that's weird. I think there was actually a port of this where the, the ah, <laughs> where the people were actually swap swap seats when you turn. I think it might have been the Amiga one. Other machines I played here included Cuber, Kung Fu Master, Tron, Hunchback, and a strange bootleg or clone of Galaxian called the Astron. I have no idea. Also, I'm convinced Phoenix is following me to every place with old arcade machines I go to. There was also a Nintendo Versus system with Mario Bros on one side and Excite Bike on the other. It's just Versus Baseball, but it's Versus Mario Brothers. <laughs> Whee! Yeah, I'm top. Look how happy he is. Be alone. Ah. 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 Machine. It feels nice. Actually, it feels nicer. This was one of the first video games I ever played. <laughs> I think. Anyway, my memory's a bit fuzzy, but it was definitely one of them. There you go. Let's see how it ranks. Ah, uh, it's kicking the can. Ah, uh, never mind. There is something to be said for games with vector graphics like Battle Zone and Tempest. The graphics look brilliant on these original cabinets. And I just can't get enough of messing about with the spinner on Tempest. Whee! I've always loved this game, but I've only ever played it on the Dreamcast before. There was something a little strange about this particular Miss Pac-Man machine. I mean, this is a fast version of this, isn't it? Um. I remember Miss Pac-Man being this fast. Oh my god. Does she still like it? Yeah. What the hell? She's really hungry. Just... Jesus. She's got white watches. I don't know though, she might be burning it all off at the speed she's running. This is so stupid. Oh my god, 
Turns out there were additional chips you could buy for Pac-Man games that when installed speed the game up like this. While obviously not the decent and proper way to play this game, it was great stupid fun like this as the ghosts can't even keep up and you can run circles around them. Ah. Oh. Ah. I might have finally game over. Yeah. <laughs> I love this version. Why doesn't it say on it? Got to go fast edition. There are several game tournaments going on over the course of the two days, including a huge Halo LAN party, score attacks for both NAM 1975 and Super Star Soldier, and two fighting game tournaments, which on the second day I decided to join in on. The first was a random fighting game tournament, in which each round took place in a different game from a thick wallet full of PlayStation 2 discs. I was first to go up and ended up with a Tekken game, a series of which I've never really been into, so safe to say I was defeated in seconds, and that was that. The other tournament I joined in on was Street Fighter V. I also haven't played this game much at all beyond EGX last year, so I had a go at getting some practice in throughout the day, generally becoming other players punch bags for a bit. In the actual tournament, of which there were around 30 competitors in all, I won my first game but lost my second. Ah well. Oh god! Ah! Oh what's going on? Oh, I think it's a bit glitchy. I think someone needs to clean the cartridge. That doesn't look right. I don't remember there being carrots in the sky. <laughs> Superstar Soldier. This is my social life. To be fair, if this is your social life, it's not that bad, honestly. This is that's a, that's a pretty good social life. We both got to try out an Oculus Rift at the tail end of the day. The PC we tried it on had a modded version of the original Doom made to work in VR, which adds eye tracking based aiming of some kind. It uh, didn't go too well. Having to remove my glasses to prevent taking ages to adjust the headset as the expo was closing very shortly, it was all a complete blur. I could just about feel my way around but couldn't even read the text. Maybe not the best demo of the hardware when I can't see for Toffee. As for Cherry T, just like with the virtual boy, it just gave her a headache very quickly. One of these days we'll have to find a more suitable setup, methinks. So that was Play Expo Margate. While it appears to be a smaller venue than what they have up in Manchester, it was a fun weekend with lots of retro consoles to play and buy, with a few extra surprises too. So if you're ever in the area when this is next on, you should give it a go. Why not? Go go play some Chip Chang Kick or some Virtual Boy or Vetrex or something. Ah, uh, the good old BBC Micro. Let's just have a look what game they got on it. Oh my god, what's happened? Emergency! Error contact emergency! Service! Ah. Quick, do something! Abort! Escape! Oh! I fixed it. Now it just says escape. Well, 